Hello everyone and welcome to the STPL. Uh, my name is Kix. I'm solo casting today so I'm gonna mix up the screen a little bit. Hopefully I can move myself fine. So yeah, it looks like that doesn't do anything. So just give me one second. Uh, but it's a wonderful Friday night. We are here finally at the weekend. And uh, life is pretty good because when it's the weekend, it's good, you know? Let's quickly turn off Discord so we don't randomly get like a chat pop up midway through the cast or whatever. Uh, but KSL qualifiers are today in South Korea, so I imagine that Rapid is actually sleeping. I didn't speak to him today. Well, I spoke to him today a little bit, but he didn't mention it, but he did ask me who was playing in the qualifiers from White Clan, so uh, hopefully he's going to see if he can talk to some of them, see how they do, follow them through it as well. Uh, I believe the qualifiers start up in about five hours, possibly, so I know last time they casted them. I'm not sure if that's on the plan this time, uh, but if it is, hopefully we get to have a look at it, because uh, watching watching the cast was, was always good. Uh, to start us off, obviously, uh, we got to talk about our first group here in uh, the... Our first group in week six. So we're going to look at group A to start with. Uh, I've added background music to all of the all of the videos, so let me know if there's like any weird sound bugs or anything, because I haven't had a chance to properly test it or anything. But yeah, we're finally going to get to our IRK game. Now, IRK are currently 4-0 in their group. One win away from guaranteeing themselves a place in the playoff finals. If uh, IRK can win here, they will tie with Naz at the top of the scoreboard. And depending on how their game goes, they can actually make it out in first position. Now, it's been a while since we've seen uh, IRK in the playoffs. The last time they made it there was all the way back in... I think it was May last year when round one ended. Uh, they went into the playoffs after beating Seoul and uh, Seoul and White Clan. <laughs> and I'm so glad Age is happy because a happy Age is a good Age. So let's actually have a look at the player rankings as well. Now, if you've not been following the SCPL just recently, there is an ELO system uh, that Radley designed. The ELO is the second number on your screen there. You'll see that Noob is currently at the top. Yeti quite close behind him. Uh, the top 10 are all relatively close together. I mean, that would be expected. But Dragon uh, taking one point ahead of his teammate Terra. And knocking TT1 down to 10th place after their last game. So we got a we got one player here from IRK. No players here from Ash, but that's kind of expected. Not that Ash are a bad team. They've just had a few bad rounds. They've had a lot of really good players to their team recently. So uh, Ash is certainly going to be a bit of a better position. Uh, but to just have a look at the matchups for our teams as well, uh, we can see exactly how both our teams have done throughout the entire SCPL so far. So if we actually have a look here, uh, you'll see that Ash overall have unfortunately only won four of their series. IRK have 118. I really do need to uh, get the overall count of series up there because it doesn't really mean too much when it's just total wins, but that is actually uh, series. Uh, this round, Ash have done a lot better. They're two to three. They are a little bit behind IRK, but if they can take a win off of IRK here, or at least if they can make it close, it could make it a little bit more difficult for IRK to uh, get out in first place. So this is going to be a very important match for them. IRK statistically are the strongest team here, but statistics, while they're good to have and while they're great to look at and great to talk about because it gives you a little bit of a talking point while casting, they're not everything, and times change. The IRK of old struggled a bit in round two and round three, so let's see if they can go. Oh, they have come back here in round four, but let's see if they can make it back into the playoffs. Uh, let's actually have a look at the rosters we're going to see today. That's kind of like the next big thing. Uh, let's remove that key bar. She's done that before, but uh, starting us off, we've got Dreamer. Uh, versus Kenzie on the mansion. That should be a relatively fun matchup. PvP between Herbie and DeWalt. I think that's probably going to be the most one-sided out of all of our matches here. We're going to have Darkish versus Aru in a ZVP on Holy World SE. Another chance of getting an Infested Terran on Holy World. Someone has to do it again. Kenzie did it once. We need more. 
I suppose, like, it'd be so cool if we saw it in the playoff finals as well. And uh, TBZ between Radley and Norgrim to finish us off, Neil. In terms of key matches here, I would say that the one I'm looking forward to the most is this first one. I'm obviously a huge fan of Radley and Norgrim as well, so I'm going to put them both. Because that is the power that I have as the caster. I get to choose as many key matches as I want to, but... Dreamer was a new addition to Ash uh, a couple of weeks ago when MSJ uh, disbanded. They left, uh, well, no, actually, Dreamer joined a while ago, but he kind of didn't play for Ash until about two weeks ago. And he's been a really strong addition to their team. And obviously, Kenzie has done really well in the SCPL so far. Radley is a sick Terran player. He's obviously the guy who's helped me a lot with the daily stuff, so huge shout outs to him. Uh, without him, we wouldn't have the ELO system. And I wouldn't have had as much time to like actually make all the graphics look nice. At least I think they look nice anyway. Uh, and then Norgrim, of course, an old school player. Been around forever. Uh, I'm not sure if this is me misremembering. I can confirm. But I'm fairly certain Norgrim is one of the players who's played since Vanilla. Or at least very close to then. Uh, I think he, he was in TOT forever. Uh, so he's been around for a long, long time. And... Uh, if we have a look at our player histories here, uh, starting us off for Ash is going to be Dreamer. And our Dreamer has only got four wins so far out of all of his wins. Uh, but he recently beat last for Red, who is a very strong Terran player. He took down Yeti on Eye of the Storm, who's obviously the second highest DLO in the SCPL at the moment. Uh, he lost to Dragon, but he took down Batorsai and Jax as well. And... That was uh, that was actually in the ace match. Uh, he took down, yeah, he took down Jax in the ace match to win Ash that series. So, really important games. Oh wait, no, uh, he must have played on like, Ash. Jax is on Ash, so he must have played against him when he was at MSJ. Ah, cool. Thank you, Waste. Okay, and his opponent spawning in... Well, not spawning. His opponent on the other screen is going to be Kenty. Kenty joined the SCPL relatively recently. It's good to finally have him here. He joined IRK, and he's actually 5-0 to zero at the moment. He's 4-0 against Protoss. He's taken down first, Talon, Castle, and Tech in a row. And his ELO is shooting up there from beating so many good players. Uh, obviously, the best player ELO-wise uh, that he beat was actually Radley. Uh, you can tell that by the amount he gained uh, when he won that game. Uh, but still, Kenzie's an absolute boss. And one thing we're going to quickly do, because I don't know if I've actually got the map intros loaded properly. I uh, just want to make sure we've got them the right way around and everything. Because this is always one of the fun things that I have to do before each cast, and then if I'm... Uh, if I'm kind of a little bit late home from work, then uh, obviously that messes up a bit. But Kenzie, just overall, a really, really good player. Can't wait to see him again. Our first map is going to be on the Mansion. So we're here on La Mancha, one of the more standard maps in the pool. If you did follow Starcraft Remastered when it first came out, it was one of the first maps that was ever televised on Starcraft Remastered's graphics as well. Uh, it was used for the Starcraft 20 event in Korea when they announced and showed off the game. So really cool to have it here in the SCPL. One of my favorite maps to actually play on uh, in terms of the standard maps. Uh, the, obviously the intro goes through it a little bit. Uh, but as EVP, uh, Zerg are actually 4-1 up against Protoss at the moment, so that obviously does give Kenzie the statistical edge, but will it give him the edge as we get it, or will it give him the, uh, will it give him the will and the way to victory as we get into game number one? It's Kenen, it's not Kenenzi, I had Kenenzi on the mind because she's playing the KSL qualifiers. It is Kenzie versus Dreamer.
Okay, starting us off here in the bottom right hand position, we do have the Orange Zerg fighting for IRK. Kenzie. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom left hand position, we do have the Teal Protoss, or Malachite Protoss, as Rapid says, fighting for Ash. Prima. So, PVZ, we've seen a few of these on this map so far. A lot of them have actually ended very, very quickly, uh, just on the basis of uh, on the basis of problems like uh, Ling Busts. Ling Busts, very good on this map. Hydra Busts, very good on this map as well. Uh, let's see exactly what choice we're going to see from Dreamy. Usually, if you go and scout after the pylon, it's going to be a Forge Expand, uh, but that obviously isn't 100%. Now, we do have an Overpool coming in here for Kenzie. Uh, we've said this before on the cast, but basically, Overpool is kind of the run-of-the-mill build in CVP at the moment. It's, it's not all-in. Uh, it's not super economical-focused, and it's not kind of weird like 12 pool is but it gives you the option of going for some early lings and get yourself ready for the latest series of the game now it is going to be a forge fast expand and we're going to see dreamer go straight into the nexus after this forge it looks like not going to build any cannons now that could be a little bit of a problem obviously if he does scout the lings coming out you're gonna to have to be careful now he's going to be using a lot of his uh a lot of his time and a lot of energy microing around this probe. Now he's not going to delete this hatchery as maybe long as he wanted to. He is going to be able to get this Nexus up. And that's kind of the big the big thing that he wants to see. Now I know that Aggie will be sitting in the, ch in the chat. I know he's spamming the 6 minute curse emote. And he's going to want to see that uh, Kenzie beat Dreamer in a really quick game here. Now we've had a lot of quick games in round 4. Uh, it's kind of weird in comparison to like the previous rounds. Uh, the games have actually been a lot faster. Like Rapid said recently that it's it's kind of strange because it's uh, the the six minute curse sort of cropped up at the end of round three and then it continued on. And I think a lot of it is because a lot of our players have just kind of gotten used to each other and they know how each other function and how they play. Now, obviously, like you have tournaments like the BSL going on, you have well the Rust Brain Cup, which was just won by IRK's very own DeWalt. And I think DeWalt won it, it wasn't Lancer X, but you've, you've got people like them and they just take really early game victories because they just know what to do. And it's really, really cool to see, but it is always fun to see uh, longer games. Now, one of the reasons behind the shorter games as well is even when you look back on Pro League, there was a lot of short games. I think just the format of Pro League, of having five 1v1s, it leads to a lot of cheese, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Cheese is really exciting sometimes. Obviously, sometimes you get the long games that are actually just really boring. Uh, I'm not going to name any games because I've loved casting every single one. But Dream of Getting It In, get the perfect scout, sees the fact there is actually only two hatches and a lair's coming in. And now, is Kenzie going to go for a Mutalist build here? I've not really seen too much of his PVZ. I know I've seen four games of them, but I cast so many games. Uh, that it's really hard to remember all of them. The top, sorry, there is the third hatch in this top left or top right position. Uh, so it is going to be three hatch layer. Probably just going to be for a spire just to get a couple of scourge. Then we do have Dreamer going into his core. Should have the Stargate coming up fairly soon after. Uh, obviously he does have the option of going for like a Citadel first. But that's certainly a lot less common these days in PvZ. Uh, so it is going to be a Stargate first as expected. So we've got the probe chasing away this drone. It's kind of interesting because Kenzie's making it look like he's sending the drone to expand, and he's not. He's actually trying to transfer it up to that top middle base. But will Dreamer actually manage to get this 
this uh, probe up to this base. If he sees the creep, that is going to be a massive, a massive victory for him. There we go. He does see the fact that that base is up there, so he's no longer in the dark. He no longer thinks it's going to be like some kind of two hatch mute rolled in or anything like that. Uh, we do have the spire coming in, but no second gas as of yet. Uh, he could obviously go into a hydralist end soon after this and just play a little bit safer. Uh, we've got Protoss coming in with the upgrades back home. Citadel is on the way as well. And just adding on some additional gateways, just to see if he can get as many units out as possible. Now, usually on a map like La Mancha, you'll see Protoss go up to about six gateways before expanding to a third. The third is a little bit harder, I'd say, for Protoss to take in this position. Uh, but luckily enough for him, it's going to be further away from his Zerg opponent uh, rather than trying to take this base. Now, this is obviously a base you can take. Uh, but it requires you to build a lot of defense here, uh, which obviously leaves you open to a runaround. So it'll be kind of cool to see exactly how Dreamer plans to play this one out. Obviously, he's not going to have to deal with any massive Hydralisk busts early on. We've got a fourth hatchery coming in and a fifth hatchery. So still no Hydralisk end, still no uh, second gas. And Kenzie's lost one of his Overlords, which... It's kind of expected this stage of the game, especially uh, when you don't go for the Hydra Den early, so... I really want to know what Kenzie's plan is, because obviously you do need the Hydra Sin eventually. There we go, it is coming up at the natural. Gonna use that as part of the wall. Always wonder who sits in these small houses in the middle. Oh yeah, those ones. Well... This is actually like the bar from StarCraft 2, uh, Joy Ray's bar. It's like Raina's bar, apparently. But yeah, it must kind of suck being in those houses. When you scale them compared to the units, they're very small. Like, I can imagine they're the kind of places that in a modern city, the rent would be super high and they'd just be really, really tiny. Because, I mean, even if you scale them to like the bones and the tar, it's really quite worrying how small those buildings are. <laughs> It looks like we are going to have a push in here from Dream McKenzie. Did skip out on a lot of units. He's been droning a lot. He's actually adding a sixth hatchery at the top. The drone's doing a really good job blocking. The zealots can't seem to get through. But as soon as these zealots get through and get on top of these drones, there's going to be a lot of damage. But that was a lot of lost time. Uh, looks like the zealots got a little bit confused. And good micro by Kenzie is going to keep these... Well, he keeps all of his drones alive and actually cleans up all of the zealots, taking very little damage. I'm really surprised that he actually managed to hold that so well. And uh, now there is actually another set of units in this top middle position, and Mutinus has been seen. Now the drones did all transfer up here. This was a little bit of a mistake here by Kenzie. Uh, he's actually transferred them into a dangerous, dangerous position. But Kenzie on top of his Link Micro is going to be able to take down all of these Zealots once again. But no, the Zealots hold strong. Plus one attack is done. Uh, the Zealots going to try and take down this Sunken. I mean, they do do a lot of damage. But Sunkens do a lot of damage in turn as well. And he's going to be a few hits away from being able to deal with that. More Mulisks are on the way. And uh, let's see what uh, Dreamer's... Uh, version of dealing with this is he actually has four cannons in his natural mineral line two in the main adding on another couple as well uh, he hasn't restarted production though on his stargates he's going to be relying entirely on storm entirely on archons as well now i really want to see hallucination come in uh, but he's not going to go for that imagine some hallucinated archons right now that'd be really cool Yeah, looks like we've got the looks like we've got the Mulus flying away. Uh, not really going to be able to do too much now. Interestingly, Kenti has built two crew colonies in Maine. This is a little bit of a mistake. There's not really too Healing much point in having spoken. those. Huge thank you, Sugo, for the 22 viewer host. Welcome to all of Sugo's viewers. I'm fairly certain Protoss GG was Sugo. If it isn't, my apologies. Uh, but looks like Kenti being a little bit safe with his Mulus. He doesn't want to rush in worry too much about getting stormed or anything like that. He's actually given Storm a moment to finish. Now, he's not going for plus one carapace or anything like that, so he's not going to have a massive amount of uh, massive money units back at home, but he is managing to sort of just kind of macro up behind this. It's kind of odd how slow this game is going. We don't really have any harass from either side now. Like, Dreamer obviously lost a load of Zealots trying to do some damage early. We do have uh, Dragoon range coming in. 
but no additional tech being added on. He's just kind of building up a big army. Going to add a couple of uh, Archons in here. Now Kenzie going to try and come behind this and see if he can get the counter attack damage done. But there is a good number of cannons here. Does possibly need to add another couple more. But once again, Kenzie is actually playing very greedy. Look how many drones he has. I mean, obviously he knows that there's no attack where he didn't know, uh, but he thought there was no attack coming his way. He's not actually poked him with a Mutilus at all. And all of a sudden there's a big, a big Protoss army outside of his base. He does have Storm Energy, enough for two Storms on two of those High Templar, and he's got two Archons as well. How is he going to hold on to this? With good Storms. Oh, Storm going down on the Mutilus. A little bit of a misclick though. Only doing a little bit of damage, but... Still, he can't seem to break in and miss Storm again by Dreamer. Really unfortunate. I think he was expecting the Mulus to try and come in behind him. But he can't break through the Sunkens. There's so many Sunkens now. There's actually a Lurker back here as well. Uh, a couple of Lurkers. So Dreamer is going to have to go back. He's going to try and take a third base behind this. Use his pushing point uh, as like a, def a defensive point for his base. Uh, there's even Dragoons back in the mineral line. This is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, these gateways are actually creating a wall behind here. He's going to have to kill one of them. Uh, you may as well finish the unit first before you before you kill that. But looks like the Mule is going to come in behind all of the army. Going to see if they can get in here and cancel the Nexus. Do manage to take out the probe, uh, but don't manage to take out anything else. Now, we have Hive on the way by Kenzie. Really, really quick Hive this game for him. He's going for so many drones. So much gas. And just, NC's macro is really going to kick into overdrive here, and Dreamer is almost on a bit of a timer. Obviously, if he can get his third base up, his third gas up, he's going to be in a good position. Uh, but letting the Zerg get up to four bases with so many hatcheries is not really something you want to let like do very often. Obviously, he didn't lose his forge or anything, uh, but there's no... I can't click one of the units. Okay, so he does have plus two, but no plus three on the way as of yet. Dreamer still in a little bit of an awkward position, doesn't really know what to do with his army. Uh, he obviously can go for some kind of contain, but then he's got to deal with the other bases as well. And this is one of those moments where it gets really tricky for Protoss, because the amount of PVZs I've seen where the Protoss now will just try and break the Zerg and then just die is too many to count. Like, I, I don't have enough fingers on my hand to count that high, uh, you know, because that's how everyone counts. But... Bit of a whiffed storm again, does manage to catch one of the Mulisks. I mean, all he needs is one good storm to kill all those Mulisks, so I can understand why he's doing it. But what he really should start doing, take a fourth base. Try and take a fifth base. Okay, so he's taken a fourth base in the top left position. This is possibly the best decision he could make. Now, obviously, it's going to be hard to split the map against the Zerg like this, but Kenty isn't looking like he wants to leave his bases right now. He's just droning up. I mean, he's got full saturation on all three of his bases, adding on another hatchery behind this. And the longer the Zerg sits back, the more time the Dream is going to have to just mass expand and see if he can win the game that way. Now, there's actually a lot of cannons coming in here. We do have Defiler Mound coming in in the bottom left of the base and another Evolution Chamber. The Mutant is going to try and come in from another angle. High Templar is here. Does he get a good storm? Oh! Oh, there goes the storm! A great storm doing a lot of damage to the Mutant but doesn't get the second one. Uh, does get that snipe, but these Mutants are heavily, heavily neutered. Now, try and take another base. Wow, he's actually going to... Okay, I was going to say he's going to distance mine but he's gonna get scouted so uh kenzie is gonna know about this top right base but what does kenzie do about the standing army he can't rotate his units properly to deal with it and the hydralis den is gonna go down and that's a big big loss now with the probes obviously getting up here to that top right base kenzie is gonna try and take the top middle are we gonna see just a just a not a base race but like a split map here this is kind of crazy, but Zerg taking a fifth is going to be insane. We've got the hatchery going down with the uh, with with the Hydra Dem, but obviously, if you think about all the hatcheries that Kenzie actually has, that's not a massive loss. Now, this could be the moment the Dreamer throws it all away. He's going to try and push in. There's a lot of 
A lot of lurkers here. A lot of the uh, units actually going down the Observer got sniped. There is two more Observers. They're going to be coming in just in the nick of time. But it's nothing but Dragoons and High Templar here. Uh, so it looks like he is going to have to be careful. Obviously when... Oh no, he high stormed one of his own High Templar. Getting nice storms though from the other angle. There is an Observer. He can't see the lurkers. But this is going to be a lot of dead units here. Kenzie getting a really good trade. And actually for the one of the first movements in this game going to be able to take on the supply advantage and obviously for Kenzie this is nothing he's got seven or eight hatteries he's going to be able to remax incredibly quickly obviously he's not going to be building any hydras uh, but he's going to be able to build other units whereas we don't actually see that many gateways from dreamer he's got one two three four five gateways six gateways he really does need more because just think of how long it's going to take dreamer to get another standing army at that time and this is one of those things i was saying about in pvz sometimes you just end up with these weird situations where the protoss player just decides hey i've got to go now and then attacks and then loses all his army and then suddenly he's got a massive disadvantage now plus three attack is almost done uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a benefit here for dreamer uh, but you can already see kenzie is spreading his map vision everywhere he wants to know exactly what's going on there's actually an overlord going up to this top right base gonna see it just to confirm as well because he technically didn't see any of those but it's going to be very difficult for dreamer to move anywhere on this map undetected there's actually going to be I thought this was a drop loading up down here, but it's going to be too scared just checking for any shots coming in. Do we have any Robotech coming in here for Dreamer? No, he's actually just going to continue adding on more gateways. Now, it does look like we're going to have Dreamer try and move out, try and secure a little bit more of the map. He needs to take this base eventually. And obviously, if he can get a load of uh, cannons here, that's going to be good. But he's still missing this base. And Kenzie is... Uh, expanding over here to the right base so this is going to be a fully split map as long as dreamer can get all his bases up so this game could go very long and uh, now i thought that was a dt but it's actually defiler uh so defiler here obviously dark swarm going to be very powerful against this mainly dragoon army here plus three attack going to improve the dts a lot there is a spore lurker and a or two lurkers and a couple of sunken so it's going to be very hard to do any harassment damage anywhere uh, but dreamer really does need to get more of an army together he needs to be in a good position if he gets his army caught out of position here this could be a critical critical blow looks like uh kenty is going to try and cut off any reinforcements from coming over this uh, spoke here in the middle of the map gonna set up a little bit of a lurker contain and now there is a couple of observers they are very closely grouped a zealot has managed to find this base over here somehow it went there undetected but zealots always do slip around everywhere looks like the oh a nice plague going down on those units plague obviously very powerful against uh, protoss because they regen their shields but the main bulk of their health is on the health which will not come back from one and looks like dream is going to push forward see if he can break through but the lack of gateways really starting to come become a massive problem the cracklings getting on top of the dragoons here moving forward pulling back to his cannons obviously going to help save himself but obviously with uh with the Phylus coming in, a High Templar gets sniped. There is a DT here, but he's not fighting with it for some reason. And another load of units are going to go down. Storm going down, killing yet another High Templar. And Crackling showing their ability to be completely amazing late game in CVZ. Let's actually have a look. 1-2 upgrades on the range here. And in terms of Lings, we do have 2-2. Two, two. So very, very strong upgrades here for Kenzie. And Dreamer is kind of stuck in a bit of an awkward position. He has to try and defend both sides of the map. He doesn't have nearly enough gateways, actually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so he's got 13 gateways, 14 gateways, uh, but 12 of those are actually down by his main. So he's not going to be able to freely move his units around as much. And he's going up to the top, but because he's got no map vision anywhere, this is going to be the moment where uh, Kenzie just runs up with a ton of units. Swarm going down on the cannons, and Swarm is going to make these cannons useless. There's only a single high template here to defend it. Doesn't have enough for another storm. And it looks like we are going to have units coming in from behind, but once again, it's mostly Dragoon. So it looks like he should be able to clean this up, but he's taken a ton of damage to his probe line. There is a fifth base coming up in the left-hand side of the map now, sixth base even. 
for our Protoss player. So he still has a shot of coming back here. He has 3-1 upgrades. 3-2 should be on the way soon. But this is, like, the efficiency of Kenzie is just going to go up and up and up now. We do have a Storm that's not actually going to hit any of the Lurkers. Going to get a lot of those links, so... And obviously the efficiency of the Protoss army gets pretty strong, but when you're getting constantly played, Kenzie is doing a great job of constantly playing in the Protoss forces. I mean, obviously Archons don't get affected too much, but there's actually a Lurker under here that's not burrowed. Nothing here could kill it until this Archon finishes, so... When this Archon finishes, this Lurker will eventually go down. Uh, you can see just how long it takes to kill it, though, with just a splash. A nice Storm on the Spoke, gonna take out a lot of units here from Kenti. But you can just see the amount of units flooding out from all of the different locations. While this Lurker does actually manage to survive, the Archon gonna leave it alive. But the lack of gateways, once again, the lack of mining now is going to be causing Dreamer issues. Now, Dreamer has made the right choice. He started to go into Reavers, and Reavers are the late-game unit in PvZ that really start to put the heart onto, uh, onto Zerg. Now, is he going for the Reaver damage upgrade? That's very, very important. Uh, looks like he isn't, as of yet, only 100 damage on those Scarabs so far. I'm fairly certain it's 150, isn't it, the upgraded one? Or uh, am I completely wrong? I don't play Protoss, so please forgive me. Uh, we've got cannons coming up here at this 9 o'clock base. More and more units here by Kenzie. I hear a big drop loading up. This is going to be the big move that uh, Kenzie's going to try and make. Now, there is obviously High Templar here, but Dreamer's units are all over in the wrong position. He's going to try and defend this bottom base, but if he's down here and the drop comes into the main, what is he going to do? Now, this is going to be the move I think that he's going to try and do. He's going to see if he can pull the units away by Kenzie to defend this bottom half of the map. Obviously, this is where all the tech is. But look at this drop coming in. There's going to be a storm. He needs a storm. He's got full energy on both these High Templar. He's not storming. This could be the difference between a win and a loss here. There's still no storm. He's not storming. There we go. Storming his own High Templar, though. Does get a decent number of storms, but does actually manage to take out both of the Lurkers. Will just about get the Defiler. There we go. All the Lurkers have been cleaned up. That's the important thing. And there are a couple of Reavers here. Now, it looks like the fight at the bottom of the map didn't go as well for Dreamer. Dreamer still at a supply deficit. Kenzie starting to really go into his own th two three upgrades on his ground. Two three upgrades on his ranged as well. And Kenzie has his slice of the map. Uh, obviously this is a four player map so you can split it completely evenly. Uh, Dreamer is obviously going to have the disadvantage now, but if the game goes later and later, you'll see that Kenti is going to slowly start to mine out his bases a lot quicker. You can see how far this base is to mining out. Dreamer is obviously mined out as main, mined out as natural. Uh, this third, or well, his official third base, is going to be fine for a while. Now we do have DT here. Uh, this is going to help a nice storm going down. Dreamer with some really, really nice storms this game, and this is so many Archons. He's going into this ultimate late game composition of Protoss where you just get tons of Archons, tons of Reavers. And oh, it looks like we've got a bust coming in at the top. There's actually a couple of Reavers here. They're going to be doing a ton of damage to all of these units under Swarm. Oh, nice. He gets the Lurkers at the front. The DT at the back going to be doing a lot of damage as well. Why is he storming there? That's a, that's a suicidal High Templar. Another drop. Oh, these are actually just empty overlords, but he is going to be able to hold on to this base. It looks like the pylon going to go down, but there is another cannon back here. Unpowered rover facility. It's a little bit of a problem, uh, but this Zealot going to be able to nearly clean up that DT. But here we go. There's so many Archons coming in here from the other side, but there's no Observer. The Archon's actually taking a ton of damage. 3-1 upgrades only on them. But as I said, this is a ton of Archons. There's still no Lurkers. Uh, sorry, there's still no Observers. Looks like we are going to have a large conga train of zealots going over to the 3 o'clock base. Going to see if he can break it, but obviously he's not going to be able to take down the uh, lurkers here. Could this be a big mistake, but Dreamer is maxed out. He's going to be able to take down the sunkens at the very least. Make the base a little bit more safe later on, but the lurkers doing so much damage. Lings cleaning up everything else. Now there is finally an observer here, so these lurkers should be taken down, but Kenti is being so, so efficient with these lurkers. Great spreading, making it very hard to break through. A lot of links coming in behind this. There is a High Templar with a Storm. 
Why can I hear a guardian? Well, there's actually guardians here that I completely missed. Sorry, I don't believe that I didn't see those on the minimap, but they're going to get cleaned up. So that's a lot of damage been taken by Dreamer. He's actually down 160 supply. I'm going to make note of the time uh, that that actually happened so I can go back and see how much damage you did. But this is where things start to get interesting. Finally. Oh no, the Shawl! The Shawl's going to go down to Scourge! Oh, that's a big loss, but the Reaver got out there? How did the Reaver get out in that position? He's going to go down to the... Sh oh, the Sunken did kill him. Now, there is finally some cows out on the map. Ultralisks. Kind of the ulti like, ultimate tank unit for Proto, for Zerg even. But with this many Archons, 3-2 upgrades, no shield upgrades as of yet. This becomes a problem, but this is so many Archons coming in. There's actually a Guardian here with 14 kills. Oh man, I'm so sorry for missing that. I've been trying to keep an eye on the minimap, but there's so much stuff going on absolutely everywhere. You can see the base down here has been taken out as well. Kenzie is everywhere right now. He's only actually 163 APM somehow, but he's just... Ev I don't understand it. He's got units in all corners of the map doing damage everywhere. 16 kills on that Guardian. The top left base is in shambles now. DTs are going to be able to block the ramp against these, uh, these Ultralisks, but... There's an Observer here as well. The base down here is cleaned up. Kenzie immediately taking it. This man needs more bases. And with the DTs going down, what is there to defend? There's just cannons and cannons against Ultralisks. Like, Ultras are powerful. The cannons aren't going to kill those Ultras. And where's all his units? He's got all his Archons down here trying to defend. He's trying to take out this base in the 6 o'clock position. But he may as well leave it. There's very few units. He needs to go and defend his main mining bases. Which he's about to lose. There's going to be a big engagement down in the bottom. Trying to keep an eye on absolutely everything here is very, very difficult. But units have broken through the top. The cannons did actually manage to take out one of those uh, Ultralisks. Dreamer's army is still pretty big. Wow, what, wait. Were they hallucinating? Oh, he's got an Arbiter. Okay. Arbiter's going to turn the tide here. Obviously with no overlords to spot this army. Suddenly these Archons are going to do a ton of damage. He's actually, I've, I don't think I've seen this. Like, he's actually just chasing the, uh, chasing the Overlords. Like, Plague would reveal these, by the way. So you're going to see... Oh, Plague... Oh, he's swarming. He should have Plagued. Plague reveals units. If you Plague everything under the Arbiter, what's he going to do? Nice storm on those Ultralists for the... Or the ult the Archons even, doing so much damage, but does it matter? Dreamer is down to one mining base and he has two probes at it. This is a do or die push for our Protoss player here. And Scourge getting the Archon, gonna knock it down a lot of health, a lot of units still going down. There isn't an Overlord here, so slowly but surely things are starting to get taken out. But he has to kill the Zerg with this push. And look at the bank that Kenzie has. He's got a hundred supply advantage. Dreamer has put up a very, a very valiant effort here against Kenzie. But it looks like time is ticking down. And it looks like this could be the moment of the GG. And obviously there was a few moments in this game that led to this. The Guardians doing a lot of damage at both the bases. Great tech switch. And you can just see, like, the amount of units that are coming in here for Kenzie is just way too much. GG! Kenzie takes down Dreamer and wins game number one for IRK. Okay, so... I didn't change the, uh... Transition. So, we uh, just put the uh, sound on again. That was a really, really well played game by Dreamer, but unfortunately, Kenzie wins at the end. And yeah, the Arbiter died just before the replay ended, so I think Kenzie wanted to see that die. Uh, we're going to go into our second game in just a second. It's going to be on New Medusa. It's the Walt versus Herbie. So I'm going to quickly load everything up. I'll be back with you guys in just a sec.
Okay guys, welcome back to the SCPL. My name is Kix. You're joining me here for our first series of today. It's IRK versus Ash. We just saw Kenzie take down Dreamer in a really cool and really awesome CVP. And it's going to be up to Ash's next player uh, to be able to take down one of the strongest players in the league. Nay, one of the strongest players outside of Korea. Uh, so let's actually introduce Ash's player first. He's going to have the world up against him here, uh, but he's definitely going to put in a lot of effort for this game. It's going to be a PvP as well, so you never know what's going to happen in a PvP. Herbie, a really, really cool guy. He joined Ash in round two. Hasn't played too many games. Last game we played for Ash was actually in November last year, so it's been a while before we, or since we've seen, since we've seen Herbie even. Uh, it's actually been many, many years since I've seen Herbie because Herbie is a film about a Volkswagen bug. I think it's VW bug. I can't remember. But either way, Herbie is a cool player. It's going to be a PvP. He's 0 3 against Protoss. And yeah, DeWalt did win the Impossible Challenge too. So DeWalt just a 6 8 guy. Leveled up a lot since he. Uh, Leveled up a lot since he went to Korea too. He played a load of games against Kanata. I saw a good number of them because I love watching Kanata play. Uh, but Kanata, unfortunately, doesn't upload enough to his YouTube. So I can't see a lot of those games. But hopefully uh, we'll get to see them again at some point. Maybe DeWalt uploaded them somewhere. Uh, but his opponent fighting for ILK is going to be DeWalt himself. Uh, DeWalt's actually in the top 10 of the ELO rankings. He's got a 77% win rate. And you can just see he's actually on a an eight game winning streak and I can't believe yeah, okay you know what I need to remind myself and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to uh, gonna go back to the camera for this I set this up right and I set it up with 10 things on the screen and every single time I forget it's 10 so I'm like slowly counting the wins so I'm like just count the losses and take them off of 10 what am I doing <laughs> I'm making my life a lot harder. Uh, but let's have a look at our second map here for the series. It's going to be Neo Medusa. Thank you, Age, for the gifted sub. Welcome, Eroy. Now you get the power of using the six minute uh, curse emote and also the emote of my cat because my cat is amazing and more of the world should see her. So, yeah, there we go. You can use those in the chat and everything. Huge thanks to Age for uh, gifting that sub there. But Neo Medusa, really, really cool map. We've seen three PvPs on this already. Uh, if you've been playing. If you've been playing in the ladder, you'll know that this is actually one of the ladder maps this season. I've played a good number of ladder games on this map, and I absolutely love it. So I'm glad to see it here, and uh, just glad to see it in the S2PL as well. Obviously, I would know about it because I put the map in. So without further ado, let's get into game number two. It's Herbie versus DeWalt. Okay, starting us off here in the 10 o'clock position, we do have the Teal Protoss fighting for IRK. It's DeWalt. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom middle position. We do have the Blue Protoss fighting for Ash. Turby. Now, Herbie is definitely the one in a dangerous position here. He's up against one of the best players in Europe, best players in the SCPL, and quite possibly one of the best players in the world, if you think about it. He's probably in at least the top 200, I would say. Uh, well, I don't know. That's me guessing. But one thing I'm just going to do, and I'm going to do this because I feel like I need to, 
What is up with these colors? Teal, blue, on a Twilight map. I'm being trolled. I'm being trolled! But yeah, uh, so let's see what's going on back here. We've got the wall going into a gateway first. Nothing too crazy there. Herbie is going to also go into a gateway first, but you can notice his is actually a couple of seconds behind. That's going to be the, the main thing. Uh, obviously the gateway is going to be used here as part of a wall. Now that does make it a little bit more dangerous later on. We've got the gate, or we've got the gas coming in here for the wall. Now Herbie is actually going for a two gate. So this is why he's building a little bit further forward. He's going to use this as a staging ground uh, to actually go and attack the wall. He's going to try and cheese his way through this game because uh, it, it's kind of hard to kill the wall in a macro game. Many people have tried. Many people have failed, and when you look at DeWalt's win rate against Protoss, he's 7 for 2, so yeah, he's definitely got the odds stacked up against him, but if DeWalt doesn't scout this, then maybe this will work for Herbie, obviously Herbie is going to be doing his best regardless. Uh, DeWalt's micro though, with his uh, Dragoons, is very very powerful, but there's no, no, um, there's no Cyber Core yet, that should be coming up next. Uh, there is going to be a Zealot here coming out, going to be immediately clicked on to that probe. The sub next door coming up here for some reason. The probes are so close to each other colour-wise. I thought somehow that Herbie had built a cyber core. And I was like, huh, where did the where'd the pylon come from? Why would you proxy a cyber core in your opponent's base? Maybe just uh, strike fear into their eyes when you start researching range in front of them. Or if you want to be really cool, uh, you basically proxy outside their wall and uh, you research plus one air attack and go mass scouts. That's the... That's the next one. But we've got two zealots coming in for Herbie. The second uh, zealot obviously a little bit of a way back. So it's going to be one versus two for now. DeWalt actually going into double zealot before he went for anything else. Uh, DeWalt, oh, DeWalt's trying to sneak his way into the back. You can break your way up here. Is he going to be able to do it? Is he going to be able to do it? It's really, really difficult. Well, it's hard and it's easy at the same time. So he messed it up there. That's a little bit unfortunate. Going to have to cancel the pylon before it starts or before it finishes. Otherwise, he's not going to get up and he'll have a pylon stuck in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but looks like he didn't realize, unfortunately. So he's just going to go for the conventional scout. Now, the issue is he doesn't actually know what build his opponent's gone for right now. So here we go. Looks like Zelda's going to get into the Walter Mineral Line. Immediate pull on those probes. Going to be able to take down one of the probes, though. Wait, did DeWalt kill his own probe? Okay, maybe not, but it looked like DeWalt killed his own probe there, but it is two gate against one. There is a shield battery here though, so uh, DeWalt making use of that knowledge he gained in Korea. Good usage of this shield battery as well, making it very, very difficult. DeWalt with some amazing early game micro here. This is not easy to do. He's at a zealot deficit, but somehow he's winning these engagements. And he's going to get, a, okay, so Herbie's going to be able to get one of these Zealots, but a Dragoon coming down here as well, actually taking a lot of damage to the Zealots, but keeping it alive the best he can. That pylon actually finished up. The Walt does get into the main, but this is really where the main action is going on. We've got a second gateway coming in. Uh, the probes did manage to kill one of the Zealots before he lost any additional probes. Herbie is ahead in supply, uh, but that is because he does have the extra units building. Now, it is going to be one Dragoon against two Zealots here, but one of the Zealots goes down immediately. A second Dragoon pops out. Wow, he's actually using the shield battery on the probe. He nearly saves the probe, but doesn't quite manage it. Probe coming in at the back. Can he get these units down? He's actually going to lose another one of the Zealots, and I think... This is where the scales have tipped. I don't know where the second Dragoon actually came from, but it almost feels like he magicked it up out of nowhere. Uh, but that's just the Waltz macro for you. But another Zealot going down in the middle line. He's trying to get on top of the Zealots, trying to do as much damage as possible. But time is running out because the more and more Dragoons get here, the less likely Zealots are to ever do any damage. He is managing to get a few probes here and there. But obviously this is going to be where the problem lies. Now, has he gone in to a cyber core? No, he's actually just continuing to build nothing but zealots. And this is the moment where Herbie's going to have to pull back and rethink his strategy. He's down in supply. GG! Or XDDDDDDDDDDDD. And then GG! XD from DeWalt. That's the end of the game. Check probe. Whoa, okay. 
Okay, right. Now, we are going to go back. We're going to go back and see what this probe did, because, yeah. My goodness, DeWalt. My, my, my. Okay, I went back so long and I still missed a load of kills. Okay, right. So, the probe is already... <laughs> Probe is already on two kills. Let's transition back into the game because uh, I, w I want to see this. So we're just going to keep the camera here. I'm going to take my hands off the mouse and we're going to watch this probe. So three kills. I'm going to put it on plot times two. Wow, this is four kills. Five kills. And six kills. That's the end of this probe. And then that, that was what the XD was for. Okay, it makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, that's that's what happens now. Uh, one of the things that I know I've heard people say before, like people way better than me, is Brood War isn't necessarily a game about just doing things really fast. It's about knowing where to keep your attention at the right time. Uh, there was this, a discussion on TL recently about how the reason why Soul Key is so good is he knows exactly what to do on each screen. And the trouble is, where Herbie was so focused on trying to kill as much as he could with his Zealots, he wasn't looking at his main base. And because he had units under attack in the other place, he probably didn't know that his probes were under attack. Now obviously, that's a little bit problematic because that does lead to the eventual loss of the game. Uh, but Herbie put up a valiant effort. He nearly broke DeWalt there, but DeWalt's micro, DeWalt's macro as well was just too good. And that's actually going to take us into game number three when we get back after this. Okay guys, welcome back to the SCPL. Uh, you're here watching game number three between IRK and Ash. So we've just seen IRK take a quick two, well not quick, the first game was actually really long. Uh, we've seen them take a 2-0 lead and we're about to go into game number three. Now if you can't see Lottie behind you, she is currently cuddled up and she is adorable. She is sleeping in such a weird way and that's... Uh, that's why it's cool, but yeah, let's actually have a look and introduce our next couple of players. So for I or for Ash, even we do have Darkish. Now this is Darkish's first game for Ash. He was actually in MSJ before, uh, so they are here joining Ash. They're going to be seeing if they can do a little bit better. They did actually lose all four of their previous games. And here is Aru fighting Priarchy. He has also lost both of his games that he's played. Huge thank you for the follow, Ace An uh, Angelion. I guess that's how you'd say it. But, yeah. He reads the comments of the videos afterwards. He does. So if you want to, if you want to, like, 
Oh, yeah, to just, just always say nice things about Rapid because he deserves it. So both players on a clean slate here. Well, I say a clean slate, they're on a losing slate, so they're both going to want to get a win. And let's actually introduce our next map. It's going to be Holy World SE. Okay, so here we have Holy World SE, third map of today, one of my favorite maps in the round four map pool. There is that infested, com or there's a command center in the middle of the map that I'm hoping gets infested at some point. We've already seen Cadenzi do it, but she only managed to build two infested Terrans before it got killed. And we saw someone rushing to infest it. Uh, it was Radley versus Eriador, and unfortunately, Radley figured out what Ariador was trying to do and killed it before he could do it. So that was really, really disappointing. But, uh, yeah, so Holy World SE, really, really cool map. We've got CBP 5 for 3, so I've actually had a lot of CBPs on here. Uh, PVT has fared a little bit better for Protoss than uh, ZBP has, but we've had some really, really cool games. So let's see if this can add to it as we get into game number 3. It's Darkish versus Aru. Okay, so starting us off here in the top right hand position, we do have the blue Protoss fighting for IRK. Daru. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom left hand position. We do have the yellow Zerg fighting for Ash. It's darkish. Now one thing I will say about just how this game has started, I've noticed that Darkish is actually using the wrong clan tag. Uh, Ash has like little a, big S, small h, and then like the uh, the open bracket. Uh, no, the closed bracket even. Whereas whereas his is some weird amalgamation. And he, you know what? He's actually made it more confusing because no one ever puts like the tag on the outside. And then the stuff in the middle. So it looks like his name's Ash and he's fighting for the Darkish clan. Yeah. Uh, guys, if you want to go and eat, I do not wish to cause you any harm. Please feel free to go and get some food. Come back and finish watching the SCPL with me. It's all good. Obviously, I'm solo casting today. So you guys in chat are my co-casters, as it were. Uh, Rapid's actually sleeping in preparation for the KSL qualifiers, I do believe. Uh, I don't know if he's casting there or not, but I know he's definitely going to go there and get as much news and as much uh, gossip for us as possible, because Rapid is a boss like that. While I kill esports, Rapid saves it, and that is, I feel, why we make a pretty good casting duo, uh, because both ways, looks like we are going to have Darkish trying to block a Ruse drone from, well, probe even, from coming in, but going to force a pylon going down now. Darkish actually has a few options here. He doesn't have to push out into the middle uh, to try and take a third base. He can actually go back behind and take the mineral only because if you go here, you're going to be taking a mineral only anyway, so you may as well just take the mineral only that's a little bit safer. Okay, so you're both going to go eat when IRK is finished. Well, you better not go fully because there's another series after IRK and uh, it's going to be sick. It's going to be Bull versus... Bull versus Sai. Uh, so that should be cool. That's actually going to be a really important match in uh, Group B as well, so you won't want to miss that. Uh, but there is going to be a five minute break in between the two series anyway, so you should be fine. Hopefully that'll give you enough time to uh, go and get your food, get your nutrition, uh, pop to the bathroom as well, and then uh, get back for some more STPL. Obviously, we're starting the weekend off on a high note so far. This has been a pretty good series. Uh, looks like we've just seen... Aru just being kind of annoying with this probe. Can't get any kills with it, unfortunately. 
because he's not DeWalt and this isn't a PvP. But, uh, you know what, actually, after that last game, I think we're going to need to come up with a nickname for, for DeWalt. We obviously had the... Well, if Back in the day, Kingdom was the Devil Probe. But genuinely, I think DeWalt needs some kind of probe nickname. So if you guys want to talk about it in chat, maybe uh, think about a cool nickname we can have. I'll be thinking about it while we're watching this game as well. Cybercore coming in for Aru. He did go for a Forge Fast Expand and a Gateway into Cannon, into Nexus. So everything looking normal. Trouble is, DeWalt's not from Poland because we could call him like the the probe of Poland or something, but he's Russian, so that doesn't work. As, as a matter of fact, is DeWalt the person who lives in Serbia? I can't remember. Siberia even, not Serbia. I'm, okay, I'm not gonna call it that. Yeah, I'm really bad with Russian, so I'm not going to try and pronounce that. Yeah, do an, an infested rush would be sick. Now, we've got the third base coming in here at the other natural. Now, unfortunately, when you're in cross positions, like if you take another natural like this, you're expanding towards your opponent. Well, oh, Vosibius. Uh, <laughs> Trouble is, my step family are Russian, and I hear them speaking Russian all the time, but I just can't pronounce it. I can't say any Russian words. Well, I can say two Russian words, but I'm not going to say them here, and I only know what they are because the first thing I asked my stepbrother uh, when I met him, I think it was, was one of the Russian swear words. <laughs> so I know two of the Russian swear words. Yeah, yeah, in the end, got it. <laughs> Also, that's all you ever hear if you play CSGO or Dota as well. I've not played Dota, but whenever I hear, well, whenever I used to hear my uh, stepbrother play, like, he wouldn't speak Russian to his team most of the time, even though he's a native Russian speaker. Uh, he would, uh, <laughs> that's all you'd hear coming from the headset. It's kind of funny. Pancake? What? Really? That is really weird. Okay. That's cool. No problem, DeWalt. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a little bit too long. Uh, but one of the things in the database that I've not added is we've actually got nationalities. So hopefully uh, I'll see if I can fix that ready for the playoffs of round four. If not, I'll be ready for the grand final playoffs. And it means we'll be able to have little flags and uh, we've also got player info so we can get cool little nicknames and stuff up on the screen for, for players. Meanwhile, we've got a Spire coming in off the back of these four hatcheries, five hatcheries even, for the Zerg player. Let's actually pay a little bit more attention to the game, unless on chat. Uh, we've got a Gateway plus one attack coming in. Stargate's done, Citadel's done, Speed's on the way. Templar Archives should be on the way somewhere. Uh, Templar Archives anywhere? Anyone? Nope, no Templar Archives just yet. But I'm really hoping we see a Queen's Nest soon. Uh, we've actually got the Hydra Den coming in at the third base. This is actually a little bit of a dangerous place to put it, but it is going to work as part of the wall, so just want to make sure he can do that. Uh, back at home, Darkish, just kind of droning up, building a few units here and there. He is going into plus one air carapace, so this could be from Muir Switch a little bit later on. He could actually already have Muir's, which he does, so uh, they are going to be run flying around in the middle of the map seeing if they can clean up some of this stuff. But the trouble is, Darkish actually doesn't have any defense. He's been skimping on that to build so many drones. And we've seen in previous games that Muir's kill Zealots very, very slowly. Uh, this is a little bit dangerous. There is a lot of damage coming down from Aru. Unlike Kenzi in the, or unlike Kenzi in the game against Dreamer, uh, unfortunately Aru, or sorry, Darkish hasn't been able to kill as many of these zealots without taking too much damage. And this actually, oh my God, there's actually zealots in the meme. Four kills on this guy. Another drone goes down. Five kills. Six kills on those drones in the main. Some of the drones have been pulled away, but you can just see the sheer amount of damage that Rue's done. But 
What is the Mutalist defense looking like? He's already got three cannons in his natural, going up to three in his main as well. And this is shaping up to be a relatively quick game. Obviously, with the uh, Zerglings coming out here, possibly he can hold on. But there's actually uh, idle drones there. Does manage to clean that up at the last second. Oh, he didn't quite manage to see the Corsair. We've actually got the, the three Mutalists trying to chase down these uh, Zealots. But you can just see how little damage they actually take. Uh, from three mutilists, so they could be there for a very very long time. They're actually gonna fly into a very dangerous position And yeah, this is this is gonna be a little bit problematic. Thank you Marine for the for the kind words But yeah, I signed that Brexit petition as well, and hopefully it does something the Corsair does go down uh, Let's actually have a look back in the main. He is starting to drone back up a little bit There is still a lot of units out on the map now for Darkish, she's actually going to need to add a few more sunken colonies. <laughs> There's only one way, and that's to invest in Terrans. I agree, let's invest in Terrans. Humanity should really invest in Terrans, given we're human, uh, but the, our government seems to want to throw us into a no-deal Brexit for no reason, so... I don't know, they're idiots, and uh, I, I know it's not a good idea to make things political just in case I send someone away, but realistically, after everything that's happened the last three years, if you're from the UK watching the stream, and you voted for Brexit, and you still want it to happen despite everything, then I'm really, really sorry, uh, but I can't help you. Uh, I'm not going to insult your intelligence or anything, because people have their own reasons, but when you look at everything that's happened, it's really not a good idea. So uh, that's enough. That's all I'm going to say on Brexit, but hopefully uh, we revoke Article 50. And yeah, I'm taking a hard stance because I believe it. But here we go. Looks like we are going to have an engagement in the middle. The Archon actually going to go down fairly quickly. But does manage to save it. A lot of Zealots. A lot of DTs coming up. In fact, this looks like a Bonneth push from Aru here. And that just becomes very, very difficult. When there's Zealots, when there's DTs, and all you have back home defending is one sunken colony. Uh, unfortunately, guys, I don't think we're going to see a Queen in this game. Um, there's more defense over at this third base. The Corsair is going to be able to go in and kill a bajillion overlords and Darkish leaves. GG! Aru takes game number three. And that's the police coming to take away Aru for that win. I, oh, you can't actually hear it, can you? Yeah. This is what I have to live with at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're coming for me. They heard I don't like Brexit, and they're coming after me now, but... Ugh, that's a little bit awkward, but... I'm gonna say something, and this is a bit of an announcement. Well, I've said it before, but I'm actually gonna be moving. Uh, I found out today that I do have all the money I need to move, so... It looks like I'm gonna be moving at some point over the next three weeks, which is really sick. So I'm gonna be moving further away from the main road. Uh, it's still pretty close, but I've been there. It's really, really nice. And I'm super, super excited. So it's gonna be really, really cool. Uh, yeah, I do have all the money. I, I just, I didn't know if I was gonna get the money for the deposit quick enough to exchange, but yeah, uh, that should be coming my way. So I'll be moving into my own flat. It's going to be shared ownership, but it's going to be a lot better than what I've got at the moment. So, let's quickly add that win for real. Obviously, IRK take the 3-0 victory there, but there is one more game in this series. It's one of the games I was looking forward to the most. Uh, where can you get a Pro League shirt? Well, that's actually something I want to look at offering for sale if people actually want to buy them. Uh, one thing I'll do is on the SCPL TV Twitter, uh, I will post a poll, or not a poll, maybe just like a thing. And if you're interested in buying a shirt, then <laughs> I got it off the SCPL price spot. No, I didn't. I, I really didn't. Uh, but if you do want to buy one, you can tweet at the SCPL account. I'll gather enough interest, see how many I'd need to order, and then I can order them. But uh, what I'll probably do is put them on Patreon, and then you can do it through there. Uh, but just quickly loading up the next replay, we'll go into the next game straight away, because there's not really too much else to do. But Overall, we've had a pretty sick series so far. My pole. <laughs> Leave Poland out of it. Oh man, I like Poland. Most Poland, like, I'm gonna be honest and say I've never met a, po a Polish person I've not liked. Like, people, like, there's a really horrible stigma in the UK and I don't know why. They're always like, oh, it, it's, it's dumb. 
Like, it's really, really dumb. But Polish people are all super friendly. They are all super, super nice. And all of the people from uh, Net Wars are really, really sick as well. So, <laughs> uh, Rapid's not using my Twitter account. Basically, I needed a picture of myself, and that was like the only decent one I had, and it just so happened that Rapid took the picture. So, yeah, glad there's a lot of Polish people watching, because I've always noticed as well, like, whenever I look at the, uh, the statistics of the stream and everything, there's always a ton of, like, Polish people to watch the SCPL, so I'm glad you all enjoy it. Hopefully you enjoy when NetWars play as well, because obviously I know uh, NetWars the full Polish team, so it's always good to see them play. Uh, but it's it's good to know that there's a lot of fans of Brood War in Poland, because Brood War is a great game, everyone should enjoy it. And, I mean, there's not really too much else I can say. So I've got the next replay loaded. Let's actually just quickly introduce both of our next players. It's my highlight match of today. I know that the uh, the series is technically done. Uh, but Ash can get another win here. And that could make it a little bit harder for IRK. But IRK have played really, really well this series. Uh, so let's quickly jump on over to the overlay. And uh, let's introduce both our players. <laughs> a ton of <laughs> <would be laughs> oh lucky noob I'm not going to do that math on stream but uh, starting here for Ash it's actually going to be one of Poland's own uh, it's actually going to be Radley Radley was on Net Wars but switched during this round he's had a really good run so far uh, unfortunately he lost to Bonneth but he beat Eriador and Horatos to win the game against Red for them last week and he's going to be up against a really, really cool player. Someone who's been around for ages. It's going to be Norgrim. Uh, Norgrim was actually one of the players at the IRK LAN that Aggie did a couple of weeks ago. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. Why did you do that, Bradley? Ah, okay, I'm confused. I'm guessing Yeti means something. Uh, but yeah, Norgrim... Really, really cool. Uh, always love watching him play. He's won his last three games. He's played against some people that, uh, like Simbi, I think Simbi's actually only played one game for White Clan and he did lose to Norgrim, uh, but he beat Caspus as well and uh, he beat Hinamu. So it's cool to see Norgrim back again. Let's introduce our fourth and final map of the series. It's going to be New Bloody Ridge. Okay, so here we have New Bloody Ridge. New Bloody Ridge, uh, one of the maps that joined for round four. It was used in one of the final seasons of Pro League, so it didn't get too much play back in 20, uh, 2010. Huge thanks, Herbon, for the big compliment as well. It does mean a lot. Uh, when we get into the game, I'll explain when I made it all. But uh, yeah, it's a two-player map. Top left, or bottom left, top right spawn. Uh, it's going to be a PvZ, no, it's going to be a TVZ even, so fan favourite matchup, Bradley, an absolute boss, always shows some amazing games, his game against Eridor was sick, he used, uh, well his game against Bonus was sick as well, he used mass rates and PvT, uh, so that was really cool, so let's not waste any more time, let's get into game number four. Okay, so starting us off here in the top right-hand position, we do have the Blue Zerg fighting for IRK. It's Nogrim. And his opponent spawning down here in the bottom left-hand position, we do have the Purple Terran fighting for Ash. It's Radley. Ah, uh, thanks, Red. Uh, T45. 
fighting trash. Huh? Oh, fighting for Ash, fighting trash, okay. Wow, nice. Sick burn! <laughs> I, I couldn't even work out what I said. <laughs> oh, well. I love solo casting, it's always really fun. Uh, but I prefer casting with Rapid because he's there to point out when I'm killing esports, so it's all good. Uh, but yeah, Herbmon, if you want to know when I had time to do all of this, basically, uh, if anyone in the chat doesn't know, it's something that I can talk about quite openly now. Uh, in January, unfortunately, my mum passed away. It was a really, really difficult time, and to be honest, I didn't really know what to do with myself, so I ended up just making stuff, and in a way, I almost pushed myself a little bit too much, because when I wasn't making stuff, I felt really bad because I wasn't making anything, and uh, it felt like I was failing myself, but at the end of the day, uh, I realized that, hey, it's not like that, we've, got, we've actually got a, a two racks coming out here from Radley, against uh, Norgrim, so that's a pretty big moment in this game. There's actually going to be a 12 hatchery as well. Swarning pool only just coming in, it is going to get scoured. But, yeah. Uh, I ended up realizing, hey, I don't actually need to make stuff all the time, and it's fine. So I finally, uh, nearly two and a half months afterwards, started to actually relax, and it's been a big help. So, uh, yeah, it was tough. Uh, it still is tough. It's going to be tough for a while, and I know it is, but... That's part of life, so yeah. If I've seemed a bit on edge, like especially in the FPW Discord, that's why. Uh, obviously when I'm having a tough time it makes it difficult, but it's been really cool because I've had this to keep me going, and also I've had all you wonderful people uh, cheering me on from the sidelines as well, so, and Rapid's been a massive, massive help too, because without him casting with me, uh, it would it would have been nearly impossible. So it's really cool that we've been doing the, well, I've been doing the SCPL now for nearly, well, okay. I think the official first day of the SCPL was the 23rd of March, 2018, or 25th. It's either 25th or 23rd. So it's been a year long tournament. And obviously I've been doing a lot of like casting. I've improved the production a bunch because I've spent a lot of time sort of iterating over what I already had. Radley jumped on. It helped improve the database with me, which was a massive, massive help. But if it wasn't for all these wonderful players that you see here, like Radley and Norgrim, they've been playing since round one. And if it wasn't for all of them, we wouldn't even have a tournament. So I'm very, very happy that I've got all you guys watching. And uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it, because that's kind of why I, what I set out to do. I wanted to try and give teams a nice team league to play in, and audiences... A nice brood war tournament to watch so as long as you guys are enjoying it that's great and i'm really grateful for all the thanks i get but please do when you can thank all the players as well because if it wasn't for the players playing i wouldn't actually have any games to cast so uh, i enjoy casting i hope to continue casting season two is going to be coming up soon after season one there's also another couple of announcements of different events that I'm going to be doing. Uh, in the meantime, some of them link into Season 2 as well, and some are going to be kind of side events uh, in between, so do look out for those announcements. Uh, but it's it's basically people like Aggie and Radley as well, and Yeti, uh, who have been around since the start. The team captains too have been just absolutely amazing. They've made my life so much easier, and uh, I've, I've got a huge amount of respect for them. And when I do the grand finals, I'm going to have like a big heartfelt speech. Uh, speech before the final, or the end of the finals, because that's what they always did in like old Pro League. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue casting for as long as I possibly can. Three ranks coming in for Radley, uh, and it's just great fun. I'm looking forward to moving as well, because I'll have a better internet, and I'll have a nice, clean, flat, rather than my jail door behind me. Um, Bradley is just standing on a ton of marines right now, he's not actually- wait. Uh, this is the wrong key. Oh, he does have an academy coming. I was like, is he ever actually gonna build an academy? Yeah, he's built an academy finally, so he is gonna be able to go into medics. Medics obviously kind of the linchpin of the Terran army, like, I know people say marines are overpowered, but... I know Aggie will know this probably more than anyone else in the chat. Basically, marines in normal vanilla Starcraft are actually just bad, because if you stim, you kill your own units, and there's no way to heal them in vanilla. Now obviously when you've got medics, 
that changed everything because suddenly marines became like a unit you could use and yeah it's kind of funny when you look back at the long long history of brood war you've obviously got a lot of different moments like the moment nada kind of popularized the use of uh use of mech against protoss and i think it was nada who really said hey like vultures are actually good units so I, I did my full time. Uh, three years I've lived here, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be moving into a nice, fresh new flat. Uh, I've found out today that I don't think I have enough money to do it as well, so that's good. Yeah, no medics, no corsairs, and no Valkyries either. Wow, he wins five racks without medics. Yeah, but that's last, man. Like. Last is like a he's a mechanical mastermind, just a little bit behind Flash. And uh, obviously due to my bias, incredibly far behind Fancy. Fancy is the one true Terran, the number one Terran. That will always be the case, even if he's playing StarCraft 2, he's still number one in my heart. He finished Brood War on top of the yellow ranking, and I will not let that go. <laughs> Three years for mocking Brexit. Be careful what you say. Okay, so the mutilists are going to be moving through for, bleh, forward through the map. We won't actually have rangers of yet. That's going to be a big, big problem for Radley. Uh, range only just now finishing up. Obviously, range going to be a massive, massive, massive thing uh, to help push back these mutilists away from this bio ball. Uh, but Radley with pretty decent micro, keeping himself on this high ground pod, making it very difficult for Norgrim to come in. Uh, we've got three, ta uh, three turrets on the mineral line over here. We've got four turrets in the main, get around another supply depot on. He is actually only on three barracks still. An addition, oh, he's on four barracks, sorry. So four barracks, going to go into his tech behind this, uh, most likely even. But Norgrim with a lot of, uh, a lot of lings going to come in here, try and go for the flank. Bradley doesn't know this is coming. If he loses this chunk of bio, this is going to be very, very dangerous. And that's a huge surround there by Norgrim, taking down Bradley's first army, getting three of those all-important medics. And unfortunately, the second force going to come out, going to get a couple of those Mulisks. But this is so, so neutered to be a bioforce, there's a single medic in here, and the medic's not even healing right now, the medic is too far away, does not know to target those marines. Now obviously with four barracks he's going to be able to come back in here pretty quickly, and Radley's going to add a third command center at a factory at the same time, third base coming up here for Norgrim, back in his base he's going into Hive. No queen, but there is a queen's nest obviously for that Hive, uh, do wish we could see some queens. Yeah, we do have Radley kind of building up his forces. Obviously, the power of Bio is not necessarily in big numbers, but it's in the upgrades, it's in the efficiency of the Medic Marine, and it's all about making use of vessels and their energy. Now, going for the build he did, which was the two ranks early on, his tech is actually really heavily delayed uh, compared to someone going two ranks Academy. Uh, so that's a little bit unfortunate here for Radley. He's going to lose his second gas. Uh, well, he's not going to lose it, but it's going to be cancelled for now. Radley still moving around with all of his units, seeing if he can find an opening. And Terran is all about finding those openings here. There's not a, uh, there's not a website where you vote for Brexit, thankfully. It was bad enough with people voting for it in person, let alone online. Uh, but yeah. So the looks like he's going to be adding some tanks here. There is two starports. Obviously, these are going to get not cancelled, but they're going to get slowed down. Uh, this missile turret not in a perfect position. Now there is actually a lot of bio here, but there's two lurkers at the front already. He does go for the scan, not hiding the lurkers under here. But look at the spines going down already, and I think this could be a little bit too much. Radley just doesn't have any units behind this. The lurkers coming in from behind going to trap all of this bio. And what exactly is Radley going to do? I mean, the Mutalists are going to come back here, clean up absolutely everything. And Radley is still stuck on two bases. Tech isn't up. That's too much. GG. Radley taps out. And IRK take the 4-0 victory. So, obviously, 4-0. Very, very good win for IRK. They are going to be looking forward to that win. Uh, because that does put them 5-0 in their group, which I think actually puts them out of 
range of all of the other teams. So it looks like Naz and IRK are going to be the two teams uh, actually getting into the playoffs from Group A. So congratulations to them, obviously. I'm not going to confirm that because I might be wrong. And uh, if I'm wrong, I don't want to be called out by anyone. So we've got one more week of the SCPL Round 4. That's going to be next week. Obviously, there's another series coming up after this. Uh, but let's quickly go in to the results. We'll have a look exactly uh, what went on through that series. A little bit unfortunate there for Radley, but sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. But let's actually have a look at how it went. Okay, so obviously we had four players here uh, for both teams. It uh, was a 4-0 victory for IRK. Uh, unfortunately for Ash, they weren't actually able to take a victory here. So Kenzie took down Dreamer, but that was a very close game. Went late game in a PvZ. DeWalt took down Herbie uh, in a PvP. Aru took down Darkish. Sorry, in a PvZ. And then Norgrim took down Radley there to finish us off on New Bloody Ridge for that 4-0 victory. Now, I... I'm going to take a very quick break. Well, I say a quick break. It's going to be about five to six minutes. Don't go anywhere because when we get back, we're going to be watching Bull versus Sai, our second series of the evening. And it's looking to be a pretty good one. So don't go anywhere, guys. See you very